Hi everyone. Hi Rowena. Uh, thank you for inviting me to this conversation. Uh, I have to say that it is a real pleasure to join you today and talk about my research. Um, I'm Stella Morgana and currently I am an adjunct lecturer at the University of Amsterdam when I have the pleasure to teach uh, Middle Eastern uh, history and politics, as well as um, comparative politics of the region. And uh, this academic year, I also uh, hold the teaching position at Leiden University, where I taught a course on the history of contemporary Iran and um, have just finalized my PhD at Leiden University. And I will soon defend my dissertation. Uh, which is titled uh, Precarize and Divide Iranian Workers from the uh, 1979 Revolution to the uh, 2009 um, Group Movement. I think that uh, in order to introduce myself, um, I have to say that my love for Western Asia and uh, the so-called Middle East and the Iran in particular has uh, followed me uh, during my whole education and learning process. Um, I mean, I hold an MA in Middle Eastern Studies from Leiden University, and uh, there I wrote a thesis on Iranian workers and state power uh, in post-revolutionary Iran. I earned um, a BA in Islamic Studies from the University of Naples um, in Italy, where I graduated actually uh, in uh, 2006 with a thesis on uh, Iran's uh, legal approaches to the opium trade. In between, I also completed uh, two postgraduate uh, diplomas. Um, they were on journalism, foreign affairs from the University of Rome, and uh, another one uh, on reporting from crisis areas from um, University of Rome to Vergata. So before starting to track the academic path as a doctoral researcher at Leiden University, um, four years and a half ago, I also worked uh, as an editor, as a website manager, as a freelancer uh, for almost 10 years from uh, 2007 to 2016. But at one point I realized that that was not my, my, my real uh, career, my path, my soul was out there. So I decided to walk away from the, you know, editing uh, activities and mainstream uh, journalism. So I dedicated the following years, uh, first me with my MA and then with my PhD to the study of um, the history of contemporary Iran. And I Iran, to be honest, has been at the core of my, my doctoral studies and research. And uh, because it, it uh, represents um, my first real academic love. Of course, um, a relation of love is struggle. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. No, that's nice how you said that because I mean, um, all love is struggle in a way, isn't it? <laughs> and um, it's a labor of love, uh, what you do, what it we is. do. So yeah, well done. Uh, congratulations on, on uh, your your thesis and that you're about to defend soon. I mean, that's very impressive, especially in the world that we live in, you know, in the COVID world. So congratulations with that. And thank you for thank taking you. us. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you for taking us through your journey. And, you know, it's incredible to walk away from like a journalist career, a journal journalistic career and to go into academia is very brave. And so, you know, thank you for sharing that with us and for pursuing your passion. Uh, I don't know, sometimes we can get so cynical, but you know, you hear things like that and it's like, you know, there is something about following, following your heart. And um, I think it helps keep it, keeps us to on the path of what we want to do and what feels right to us. So thank you so much for sharing that. And thank you for joining us. I mean, it's really nice to have you. Thank um, you. Thank you. It's really nice to have you. And I'm looking forward to hearing more about your research interests. I mean, and because you work on Iranian workers, it's it's very 
much aligned to what I, I like, I, I'm very interested in, um, maybe a little bit before 79, but um, it's still something that I'm very passionate about. And um, so, I mean, what, what I'd like to know is, uh, you know, besides, you know, what you've said, uh, what led you to pursue your topic in your PhD? You've mentioned a little bit about your, your path from your BA to your MA, but what made you focus on um, Iranian workers in particular? Oh, I think that uh, the idea that I had in mind was just to, to try to walk it away from the uh, stereotypical uh, definitions of uh, the Iranian society and the Iranian history in general. Mm. So I wanted to uh, understand more. I wanted to walk away from those uh, dichotomous, uh, dichotomous understandings of uh, Euro Iran. So when I started my my MA on Iranian workers, there was you know I, I gave it a try and I analyzed um, uh, Iranian uh, workers' relations uh, to state power through the analysis of uh, posters in the factories. Oh, oh, love that! And that was love lovely. That. So little by little, <laughs> my PhD mm. research. Uh, on, or at least the idea, the project I had in mind uh, took shape. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then it, it started to be concerned uh, with um, the uh, realm of social history, right. discusses of power and shifting mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. power relations in post-revolutionary mm -hmm. Iran. So in particular, I um, explore the role of workers in post-revolutionary Iran. Mm -hmm. And I mm -hmm. asked myself um, the following questions. You know, I want to share them uh, with you because yes, uh, yes, maybe you can um, yeah. better understand how I try to, to, to reframe the understanding of uh, um, Iranian history. And mm -hmm. I tried to, to explore that. I asked myself deep. The, the, the agency of, of work in Iran represents mm -hmm. a driver for change mm -hmm. between two totally different moments uh, mm -hmm. of the history of contemporary Iran, such as the uh, 1979 revolution mm -hmm. and another moment, so the 2009 Green Movement, and right. on what terms? And how, in particular, did this uh, um, over uh, labor transform mm -hmm. the relations of power and domination during this, this period, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, so, I mean, I think that uh, the idea was the main uh, overarching idea here as whereas workers mm -hmm. were crucial to the success of the 1979 revolution. Right. Mm -hmm. In 2009, which was not supposed to be a revolution, was uh, it was a movement, and I mean, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. it's difficult to to, to summarize what the mm -hmm. green movement represented here. But what I wanted to say is that in 2009, workers were absent, at least yeah. as a collective force. Mm, right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So my no, dissertation basically uh, yeah. examined the reasons um, explaining this yeah. collective absence. It's sort of Beyond a, a journey, the yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. I know that's I I never thought about it that way because I mean of course we see seventy nine you know we know of the strikes we know of uh, the role of Iranian workers throughout the eighties as well but you're right now it's interesting to see how it petered out a little bit because I mean. It, as far as I'm aware, I don't know much about the green movement and the role of workers. Or, and I suppose the definition of what an, a worker is changes as well, would you say? Oh, yeah, definitely. Mm. The idea of uh, working class and, yeah. uh, and workers as a class or yeah. as a collective force yeah. Needs to be further explored because Absolutely. the idea that uh, you know to Iran, but this leads us to a broader, I think, uh, discussion on sure. how we apply 
mm -hmm. uh, different and crystallized uh, categories to mm -hmm. the Iranian society. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And so, yes, definitely the, the, the consciousness or collective awareness of mm -hmm. um, uh, Iranian workers has um, definitely transformed until now, since 1979. And in particular, sure. it transformed uh, since the 1979 revolution because of uh, a series of factors. Mm. So uh, I think that uh, um, according to, to what I researched and uh, what my, my dissertation actually um, explored, on the one hand, uh, we can say that uh, um, legal, uh, economic, social factors, you know, marginalized, workers and hindered mm. uh, workers active role in shaping and um, determining grassroots politics but on the right. other hand the uh, shifting uh, context mirrored the uh, Islamic Republic of Iran's official discourse mm. and also adds right. um, necessities to consolidate uh, its power. So as a result, workers with, were not uh, fully and truly able to develop uh, mm. strong solidarity building mechanisms and, for example, cross-class cl uh, uh, alliances in right. 2009, as it was mm -hmm. the case in 1979. Mm. So discourses and, yeah. and structural factors yeah. uh, and at the same time wow. structure right. and agency manifested mm. themselves as being two sides of the, the same coin. I, I'm wondering whether sort of the, the crackdown of parties and unions and sort of like in the early 80s also may have played a part in that um, in terms of a I suppose on one hand, it's also a lack of leadership for these workers on one hand. And on the other hand, it's also, I think what we define as workers, I found with my own work, we tend to uh, impose sort of like this industrial revolution type of definitions on Iran, which I think also limits our, almost our imagination and how we how we see what a worker is. And I think that was uh, definitely in places like, you know, where the two day were active. And that's also kind of where they failed because they concentrated and they use sort of like these Western Marxist sort of definitions. And uh, I think it cut out a lot of um, what could be termed as workers in Iran. Although, I mean, I, I don't obviously work in the, on the seventies, but that seems to be my, my understanding as well. I totally agree uh, mm. with uh, what you are saying and because I think that you know both structural and discursive processes yeah. intermittently turn the Iranian workers uh, from subjects into agents under mm. the the, um, the government of the Islamic Republic in, in the mm. period at least I studied and mm. So I think th this is also why I, I, I tried to, to include uh, the, con the Gramscian concept of cultural hegemony in the right. context of evolving uh, power relations, mm -hmm. because I think mm -hmm. that it could represent a valuable framework to understand mm -hmm. the many whys and also the many hows mm -hmm. <laughs> related to these courses on workers as mm -hmm. instrumental uh, tools in the making of you know uh, hegemon both hegemonic and mm -hmm. counter hegemonic uh, practices mm -hmm. in Iran so so workers uh, I think that uh, connecting to what you just said express their agency mm -hmm. founding uh, their own conscious paths of both formal and informal resistance mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. not only in the Iranian revolution but in the following years after uh, 1979 mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think yeah. that we should include uh, other processes that I called sure. uh, in my dissertation the processes of precarization so beyond mm -hmm. mere uh, mere economic or legal dimensions, these mm -hmm. processes make 
and made uh, workers precarious. This mm. process is up. Uh, precarization, but legal, economic, but also social, weakened mm -hmm. the, 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 the potential for grassroots uh, politics. Wow. Through right. Also, de radicalization, I, mm. I, I think. If, it, yeah. if you know what right. I mean. Yeah. I understand. No, no, that's uh, oh, wow. Um, I look forward to reading your dissertation, actually. I think um, I, might, I might bother you to, to read through it because it's very important work. Um, it's it, it brings a new dimension into it as well because you're also taking it up to 2009 which uh, a lot of scholars don't actually do um so that's i mean i can talk about this for a long time because um, <laughs> i'm also very interested but just to sort of um learn more about your process and, and 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 your research i mean what has been the main surprises or challenges studying iran i mean in your topic <laughs> oh wow yeah, I, I think that where, my, where my, to start? Uh, yeah, where to start precisely because you know my story with Iran dates mm. back actually uh, 2007 uh, mm -hmm. uh, when for the first time I went to Iran because mm. uh, I had the chance to 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 uh, nice. to go yeah to to get an internship at the Italian embassy. So I was quite young mm. uh, in 2007. Oh. That was right after my my BA. Mm -hmm. And since then, I think I changed the ideas on Iran many times. So yeah. I'm very lucky that I approached uh, such a um, complex uh, topic and dissertation uh, with, with uh, a better, you know, uh, mm -hmm. personal stance and tough, mm -hmm. tough and probably uh, mm -hmm. stance. But uh, the, the main challenges. Um, I think are related uh, to it's it's always a matter of questions. Uh, in mm. particular, I was very much concerned, and I'm still very much concerned, on how to to build uh, intimate uh, you know interactions with people mm. uh, in Iran without mm -hmm. getting um, negatively influenced by the obsession of. Uh, you know, some categories often connected to the Iran, I had to mm -hmm. challenge myself and myself mm -hmm. uh, orientalist uh, biases, because mm -hmm. I, I think that no one can escape the, no. um, the prejudices that they are there uh, on Iran or the idea that I'll be the only one who can mm -hmm speak about Iran and I really mm. challenge myself to avoid that kind uh, of approach. I, mm -hmm. I, I think that, that I need to add also that my positionality as a researcher and identity of course uh, have shaped uh, my fundings, my mm -hmm. results mm -hmm. and um, I also ask myself to what extent do Persian language, I mean, and my language skills, uh, uh, to what extent have they helped me to, to you know, uh, to connect to the Iranian people as a known Iranian scholar mm. or, and to avoid and to overcome or at least to cope with the idea that Iran is not exceptional, but we need yeah. to deconstruct a lot mm. of um, misconceptions on Iran. Sure. And the problem is asking the wrong questions all the time may lead us to very uh, wrong answers, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah, so my PhD was, uh, has been a journey, a learning journey. And mm -hmm. I have to, to thank all the kind hearts uh, that, um, have helped me through that uh, because I think you know in Persian they say "dasto del boz" uh, in order to say that someone <laughs> yeah. is generous. So yeah. you you have to to be generous and to open your heart, yeah, uh, your heart, course. not just your your hands. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's no, that's very very true. No, I like that. Um, and you know, I I think uh, that's nice that you said that because uh, very often you know we're always you know, or at least I am sort of on a one track, like, okay, I'm just going to get through things. But actually so many people have helped me along the way. And it's nice to sort of take 
take the time to say, you know, what, thank you. I'm I'm very grateful. Even when it didn't seem at the time like a good, like a nice thing, but actually every negative kind of gets you to where you are. So I think that's nice. And, and it is a journey. And I think that leads very nicely to my last question about whether you're considering to stay on in, in academia. I mean, um, what is the end journey for you? Or not the end, like the after your PhD, let's say. I don't know. Uh, I The only thing I can say is that I think that I found what makes me smile beyond this, you know, controversial relation of like, uh, love and struggle with Iran and all, yeah. all the, the things connected yeah. to getting to Iran or studying such uh, mm. Uh, uh, a sensitive topic and mm. but I, I love what I do I love mm. what I do and mm. uh, I really want to 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 share my knowledge with mm. students and to, mm. to keep contributing to the the to broaden the lens and the framework to understand the land uh, I'm just you know a little drop in a in a big sea but <laughs> I really would love to to keep tracking this mm. uh, challenging yet mm. amazing path. So yeah. Yeah. maybe name oh. Shimi says, so I don't know. But <laughs> Inshallah. I, I hope no. I can stay in academia. But the thing is, is that, you know, I, I it, it's nice to hear that. And I, I really think that the field would benefit with having people like you um, in it. So I hope you'll, you'll keep, you'll keep, you'll keep, you'll keep on that path and um, I hope you can keep this conversation going as well. Um, but thank you so very much Stella for your time today and for talking to me. So I, I really appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rowena. I really, uh, I wish you all the best and please let me know if you want to connect again to have Certainly. or to, to collaborate because I, I <laughs> truly, yeah, I, 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 I truly look forward to working with, uh great scholars but also mm. kind hearts no, you're very kind. we need that yeah <laughs> thank you <laughs> thank you